Hey everyone, so what is wrong with the V6, the 1GR FE? Let's run through all the problems. The, the V6 owners, they're really going to love this. I probably should call the video that. The V6 petrol owners are going to love this. All right, starting with number one, absolutely nothing. It's a bit of a surprise for a few people, absolutely nothing. Well, not really, but look, you know, that's what they want to hear. So for those people that wanted to hear that, time to move on, because now we're going to get to the real problems. Not much really. So you should be pretty happy with that as well. So the biggest issue with it, look, I've said it in a few other videos recently. I've said it over the years. Traditionally, I liked and I love petrol engines. And if I was going to build a performance vehicle, um, it'd be a petrol engine, not a diesel. Diesel is for four-wheel driving. It's for better economy. Remote touring, where you, you know, the bigger tanks in the Pradas, or if you've got to carry extra fuel, diesel's a lot safer to carry the extra fuel. And of course, if you're towing, you'll use a little bit more fuel than if you weren't, but with a petrol, if you're towing, you use about twice as much fuel. And that's just a fact. That's just how it is. So ballpark numbers, depends what you're towing, what speed, a lot of variables. So no need for any arguments. That's around about what it is. That's why people use them. But anyway, back to the V6 that everybody stopped buying and they weren't selling them in the end, so they got rid of it. I'm not saying that was a wise decision. A lot of people probably should have purchased this engine instead of the diesel. Um, I still think the diesel's awesome. And obviously we've got, actually, in case you didn't know, we've got three of them. We've got one in a 2013 Hilux. We've got one in a 2013 Prado GX. They're both white, so an SR and a GX. They're like twins. Twin Prado and Hilux 2013, the most popular year of the Hilux. And we've got two 2008 120 Prados in silver. So what a coincidence. And one's a 1KD and one's a V6, and we're just building this one up. But um, for a long time, uh, people... Petrol owners seem to think that these are bulletproof and nothing goes wrong with them. Well, that is incorrect. Um, but most of the problems, like the diesel engine, are avoidable if you do the scheduled servicing plus all my recommended extras. Um, one of your biggest things is oil changes, and I highly recommend, absolute minimum, oil change schedule of 10,000 kilometres or six months Whichever comes first, not second. And that means if you park it, the clock doesn't stop, okay? Although maybe it should in some circumstances, but if you've only done 5,000 Ks in six months, you've done more, less, more shorter trips, less longer trips, more cold starts, warm-up cycles, running rich, putting all that excessive fuel, which is contaminating the oil, which is going to damage your seals, which is going to lead to the next problems that we're going to talk about. And it's all really comes down to maintenance on this engine in, for the most part, depending what year you had. They did have some earlier models had some issues, more likely with head gasket issues and stuff like that. So there is some issues that they have, and it's probably more common, to be quite honest, per vehicle than any issues with any um, diesels, whatever. Now, again, the petrol owners are going, oh, no, they're not, whatever, you know, <laughs> whatever. Like, you know, there's not many of these around compared to diesels in Australia, percentage-wise. Um, in the end, it was just, yeah, they just weren't buying them and they got rid of them. I reckon the last one was probably, what was it, around 2013? Again, we're talking 11 years ago now. Um, they just slowly, slowly phased out. Even in the 120s, it was probably well less than 10% of the sales and the vehicles on the road, probably 5% or less. I don't know. I don't have the numbers. I just go by what I see coming into the workshop. Very rare. So... The earlier ones maybe had some issues that got ironed out with a couple of fixes later. I don't know too much about I'm not the absolute expert on the V6 1GR in Australia in what year. Like on the diesels, I can tell you on the first month, 2008, they changed those, the copper seats under the injectors, still copper with the coating on them. I know all the little ins and outs of that because that's what I've been specialising in because the problem was once again, same problem with this engine, maintenance. Once you understand the maintenance that needs to be done on each engine, you can generally avoid all the pitfalls. Of course, if you haven't owned it from new, like this one, I've only recently picked this one up. So what's happened for the last 16 years and 291,000 Ks, I've got a bit of a rough idea what's gone down and I think we'll be okay, but it's always a risk. But for the investment, it doesn't matter. At the moment, this thing still owes me probably under $10,000. It's going to owe me more than that by the time I'm done because I'm fussy. I like to replace things. I've ordered a radiator. I've got the last radiator in australia for this v6 120 i don't know if there's more coming or not but i got the last one and it cost me under 500 dollars. i can't remember but i thought yep that's cheap even i was still thinking about it because this radiator over here it's seeming pretty strong compared to because we're getting to the part of the problem right the heat 
in the engine bay. But let me just finish by saying, on my vehicle, I'll be doing oil changes every 5,000 kilometers, and I recommend that on all petrol engines. If you're doing 5,000 Ks a month, you can probably do it every two months, every 10,000 Ks, because it means you're doing longer, less warm-up cycles, it's already at temperature. I hope you subscribe, turn the bell on, and get the way I think and the fact of the matter so that you can look after your vehicle the most efficient way so that it lasts and so that you're not wasting money overdoing things as well. So oil changes are key on this. Next most important thing is the coolant changes and that's gonna help avoid your corrosion and everything in the system to avoid head gasket problems and all that sort of thing, hopefully, right? Oil changes, so oil is lubricating the engine. If you don't change it and it gets bad and blocks up the oil pickup, it's gonna starve it of oil, you're gonna have problems. Big time, uh, like I said, we showed on another video someone that that happened to and you know and there's we don't see many of these but you know it seems to be whenever i ask someone about with someone that's got one they've had a bad experience and i like to share those bad experiences because it seems to be pretty common amongst v6 owners you've got the other half that have never had a problem maybe they've had them since new or they've got a good one they're doing all the regular oil changes so please do that because we don't want you to have any issues and i think this is definitely a really awesome engine it's one of the best engines ever built like the 1kd and like a number of other engines and everybody's going to put in the comment what the best engine is and that's cool there's a lot of good engines there's a lot of bad engines but none of these toyota engines in my opinion are bad the 1kz another good engine but it had head issues as well has issues with the glow plugs breaking off and that you've really got to get on the videos and understand each particular issue so on the v6 the engine itself all changes coolant changes um, upgrade to the Iridium plugs, you can do those every 100,000 then, that's what we've just put into this. And for the most part, the rest of the problems caused by the petrol are outside of the engine, e.g. the centre units in the fuel tank, okay? They, the petrol damages those and they, it's a common thing on these and it's expensive to drop the tanks and change those components. We won't go on about it too much, we'll talk about more in some other videos later, and we already have. As I said, the V6 engine, this petrol engine, it generates a lot more heat in the engine bay, it really does. And um, that means the plastics and materials under there, even though it's quality, you know, materials and all that sort of thing. Um, EPDM rubber and all this sort of thing, that's actually really good. And the plastic, whatever it is, you know, those letters for that. But it will deteriorate faster than the diesel is what we've found. Um, but the thing is, so on the diesel over here, it's got a little bleeder on the radiator. And if you bump it, it'll break off pretty easy on the 1KD. They've upgraded on the 1GD. There's a positive of the 1gd engine there you go it's not the engine itself is positive but components around it on the 150 proto things they've upgraded that's the benefit having last of the best in the 150s and even moving into the 1gd it's still a 150 proto so i believe it's also one of the best vehicles ever built with the 120 so stick with those is my opinion that's what i'm doing but um the radiator here, that breaks off. You're gonna lose a bit of coolant, it's not gonna cook your engine in the diesel, but over this side here at the top radiator hose, right, just here, people have had that snap off there. Um, you know, they're driving, they didn't know, the, loses all the coolant, cooks the engine, it's all over, no more V6, VVTI, right? So be aware of that one. So keep an eye on your radiator, keep it, an eye on your nose. If you smell coolant, you could have an issue. Pull over straight away. Have a scan gauge, two scan gauge trees, something on the dash there to monitor those coolant temps. Anyway, so that's wrong with the V6. Not much. Just keep the maintenance up to it. Uh, if you have bad coolant, you can have corrosion. It can ride off the block. There's a number of issues, again, you can have if you don't follow that maintenance schedule, which we're going to talk about a bit more in other videos, um, like we have for many years on the diesels. Check out the playlists on our YouTube channel if you want to know more about the diesels. So what's wrong with the V6? I'm pretty sure that covers it, you know? Get the maintenance right, keep it on the plastics like the radiator, that's the one we know about that's really detrimental, that it could just, boom, be all over Red Rover. That oil pickup, if you buy one second-hand used vehicle, get that sump off, check the oil pickup. It's not much work, it's gonna be worthwhile doing. Um, your transmission is your next most expensive component, give it a transmission of oil flush, or a good drain and refill, that's what we did on this one. Um, pretty clean because what's really good about this they come the v6 they do have that standard um, oil cooler down there anyway yeah so at the end of the day that is another bonus there's some bonuses on the v6 right um, why have i got this the idea is to test it out as a towing vehicle we want to get it running right get it all nice and clean mickey mouse set up the way i like it make sure it's reliable do some fuel economy tests on it then we're going to do some towing with it and see how much worse the fuel economy gets it's a 120, it's nice and light, it's stock standard. 
We've firmed up the suspension, putting some uh, 1GD front struts in the front, which gave it about 20 mil lift and firmed it up nice and firm. New shockers in the back from that same car and some Dobinson's 20 mil, 40 mil shorter 329s to firm up the rear, which gave it about 30 mil at the back. So it should be nice to hook up and take a good 100, 150 kilo load on the uh, tow ball, approximately probably what it should be, 150 kilos, depending on what weight you're towing, but there's no need to go to the max but you certainly don't want to be light either. Each, every vehicle setup will vary. This isn't a towing video. We've got those and there'll be more. So subscribe, turn the bell on, and we'll catch you in the next video. See ya.